You won't believe how simple this technique is. Usually as fishermen, we love to complicate things, whether it be buying the most expensive gear or throwing something wild looking that a company advertises as a game changer. But at the end of the day, we just want to catch fish. So let me introduce you to the floating worm. Best fish in the springtime when bass are moving shallow. Grab yourself some insanely bright colored unsalted worms like methylate or bubblegum. Then the lightest hook you can find. The goal is to cast shallow and watch fish eat it. And I'm just gonna let the results speak for themselves. With my college lake in full spring swing, let's go school some fish. He's got it. He's got it. Oh, no way. So I never want to overhype things, but when I have fish on the beds and they allow me to come up and film them without even getting scared, today might be pretty good. <laughs> Our verse of the day is from Psalm 118, verse 1. Oh, give thanks to the Lord for his steadfast love endorse forever. From the simplest beautiful flower to the big things that happen in life, there's so much to be thankful for. And as we walk to our very first spot, drop down something in the comments that has brought you joy lately. For me, a couple of my buddies and I have been searching around for a place to live next school year and i believe we have finally found somewhere praise god we're going super simple today with just a spinning setup this is like a shimano vanford size 2000 and here is a halo face two-piece rod if you got a chance to check out last week's video you could tell that i was a little bit sick with a cold but regardless i still spent three days trying to just catch some bedding bass today i'm feeling a lot better praise god and i got two colors methylate and green pumpkin. This is literally all you need. This pack right here, six bucks, and there's 20 worms in here. Talk about value. Now, methylate is a color that's hard to spell, hard to pronounce, but also very, very hard to get your hands on. It's really hard to describe. It's kind of like a bright neon orange mixed with some red, but this is supposed to stand out extremely well. So I'm gonna go ahead and go with this to start off with. I see a big one just right there. Maybe you guys can see with my sunglasses, but regardless, I've never thrown this methylate color, so there's a first for everything, right? I think sometimes as fishermen, we just overcomplicate things. All right, first cast. All right, he saw it, but he just kind of stared at it. He's like, you really expect me to bite that thing that looks like a highlighter? I'm trying to maintain some space right here. I don't want to get too close. I mean, this thing in the water just looks so dangerous. The way it just slowly sinks. Check it out. Wow. That looks so good. Being able to see the fish look at my lure. Compared to with like during the winter time when I was fishing a ton of muddy water. Bleh. I couldn't see a single thing. And now he might eat it. I don't know if this color is a little scary for them. Because it's like it doesn't imitate anything out in the wild. Can you imagine any bait fish that looks like this? It's meant to be absurdly slow and bright colored. And it is also only 2.55. Right next to this path, actually, I was walking and I see another fish just out there. We got a stick snagged around a rod in line. Get out of here, buddy. I'm going to keep on trying this methylate, but if it's not popular at all, I'm just going to go to bubblegum. In this pre-spawn spawn mode, they're like, they're funky. Some of them, they'll eat easily. Others, they want nothing to do with you. Last spring, I did all sorts of wild type of fishing. I would throw these giant topwater baits and catch them in tournaments and all of that good stuff. And one thing I'm really looking forward to is the boathouse at my school opening up. Then I could take a canoe that my school owns and wreck him on the water. I'm gonna give this tree stump couple more casts out in this direction and then I'm a bounce keep going covering water finding some fish come on buddy oh he just nipped it methylate no working so far so let's switch it up pick up the bubble gum this might get them really angry let's scavenge down this hill <sighs> boom all right, let's take a cast out here. Is there gonna be anything out here? I'm not sure this bubble gum is really quite the good color. I was getting a lot more bites on the methylate. Methyl, meth, my methylate. It's so hard to say. I'm gonna go ahead and switch my worm color back to methylate. No more bubble gum. Put this away. Maybe that's better for murkier water, but I think the methylate 
makes these bass really angry because it's pretty red and crawfish are red. I'm gonna slowly sneak down here. I see a bedding bass right here. Sees it. Oh. Got him. Got him. Got him. Got him. Got him. Got him. That's the male. That's a small male. Okay, cool. A little male bass. Not bad, but the female is much bigger. So we're just gonna take a picture and let him go real quick. Okay, buddy. Thank you. That's about like a pounder. Nothing crazy. The methylate got it done like clockwork. It was so quick. I wasn't even ready for it, really. That got my heart pumping. I was like, dude, I'm not ready to fight a fish just yet. But that male was a small one. We want them to have a good spawn, so the second I catch him, I release him back. Now you could say, if I want him to have a good spawn, I don't catch them at all, and true. Some people choose not to fish the spawn, some do. Whatever it is, just make sure you guys get them back in the water as soon as possible. But you know, I'm not holding him out for like five minutes to get a selfie or anything. You know, this technique is probably best when I'm on a boat, because that way I can actually cast to the shore rather than cast from the shore. Just so you guys hold tight, I actually know the spot of a really, really big like four pounder or five pounder, and he's so willing to eat but I'm saving him for last. Let's target this three pounder on this tree. And then after this, we'll go hit the giant, giant that I know will bite. Oh, I almost had him. I almost had him. He launched for it. The trick I figured out is to lay it in front of him and then pop it up right in front of his face. And then he goes, and I gotta be quick. This fish is probably so confused. He's like, why is this bright orange color worm always coming on my bed? I'm gonna decrease this, make it smaller. See what we can do now. Got him, got him, got him, got him, got him. Oh, he ate it last minute. Oh, buddy, come, come on, come on, come on, come on. Dude, I've been, I've been trying to catch this fish for hours. I've stayed here for two hours, and I finally got him. Finally. That's a three-pounder. Easy. All day. The Lord is so good. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Quick pick, and we're letting her go. I kind of want to get underwater release. <laughs> That's so cool. He finally ate the floating worm when I made it a baby floating worm. Patience, a quality we all need to have. And the reason is it pays off. Get it? Patience pays off. Now, as I promised earlier, we're making our way to the massive five pounder. Oh, I hope he's still here. Take one last cast with this and I'm gonna switch to another bait. Switch to the ghillie. This is like my secret weapon. Here we go. Right in front of me. I think this is the big one. Oh yeah, he sees it. He sees it. Oh, he ate it and I, I set the hook, but since I'm so close, he yanked it straight out of his mouth. It's okay, it's okay, we'll get back in there. Yeah, he doesn't like the ghillie. He's very angry at it. This is good. I'm gonna give some space. Oh, he sees it again. He's gonna eat it. Come on, bud. Can we get our third fish of the day? That would be insane. No way Fisher Yin catches more than one fish in a video. He's staring at it as it's falling. Oh, oh, he ate it. Oh, 
No way, he keeps on swallowing it, but then like, I'm missing it. I don't know how. Dude, I deserve like, a, a medal or something. Cause it has to be impossible to lose fish like this. They're eating the entire gilly. He sees it, he's coming. He's got it, he's got it. Oh, no way. This one is small. This is not the big five pounder I saw earlier. This is a male. This is a male. The female was here earlier guarding. Oh. Okay. It's not as small as I thought, about a two pounder. Very nice. Ate the gilly. And I see ya. Well, that was the male. Man, the big female is gone. Like that five pounder I saw earlier. It's okay, I'm not gonna catch him again. I probably could. This floating worm technique is OP, bro. I don't know what y'all are doing if you ain't fishing this right after watching this. Oh, I see a little bass. Watch, I'm gonna catch him. He's just right there. Oh, it's about to get good. Watch, guys, watch this. Something quite simple. Nothing crazy. Since he's small and experienced, there he is. Boom, the floating worm. That's how it's supposed to be fished. You're supposed to cast it to the bank and then catch some mondos like this. Let's go. All righty, buddy. About a one pounder. That's fish number four. Oh, yeah. Very beautiful. See you, buddy. Ah, oh, thank the Lord. <sighs> floating worm. This is my thigh late, it's my favorite. Sun is quickly setting, four bass, that's around like five-ish or six pounds total. Man, if I was fishing a tournament, we'd be in a good spot. And there we are, four fish. That's like a new record for me. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Next week, no more bank fishing. We're getting on a canoe. <laughs>